What is going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Learn Robotics with Liz. I'm Liz. I'm a robotics engineer and the founder of Learn Robotics. I help people go from not knowing anything about robots to having successful careers in the robotics industry. And this episode's a little bit different because I'm going to talk a little bit more about how we help our enterprise clients. So these are going to be schools, organizations, universities, groups. So anybody that has a group of people that they want to train up in robotics, they will work with us to devise a plan. And this episode is going to be a little bit controversial because I'm going to be talking and you probably clicked on it because of this title. I'm going to be talking about why most robotics programs suck. Okay. So just stay with me here. I'm going to pull up my whiteboard. We're going to talk a little bit more about why most organizations have really bad robotics programs, if they even have one at all. And then I'm going to talk about how you can kind of shift a crappy program, a non-existent program, um, or even like honestly a really bad program into something that's going to perform a lot better, get more people engaged with robotics and ultimately get more people with robotic skills, right? Because if you're gonna have a training program on robotics, your end goal should be getting, you know, 50, 60, 75, 90, 100% of your population that's taking the program actually through the program, that's number one. And number two, actually using these skills for whatever they need to use them for. So if it's, you know, high school, that purpose may be a little bit different than if it's, you know, a professional program or an organization. But really the purpose of bringing in high quality training and having training is so that people can use the training to either advance their careers, advance their life, um, or apply it in their job, right? So upskilling. Okay, so we're going to talk today a little bit about what I would consider like the three main reasons why most robotics programs from a training, from a corporate standpoint, from an enterprise level, why they suck and why they're garbage. Okay, and then I'm going to give you a couple pointers on what you can do to flip those three things so that you have a better um, understanding of how you want to set up your program. And if you need some help at the end, I'm going to talk a little bit more about how you can work with me or request to work with me, Learn Robotics and my team to design your robotics program. We'll help you roll it out enterprise level. So if you have a group of 10 or you have a group of 10,000, we can help you set up your program and you can start generating some of those cool success stories. So the first thing that I want to do is kind of split up this page and we'll, we'll talk about, I love using these pillars. I think it gives kind of a good contrast as to like the three areas of my brain and kind of how I break down why these programs are not very good to begin with. Okay. So the first reason why robotics programs, when they're rolled out at an enterprise or in an upskilling or at a curriculum level, why it's not very good is because the people running these programs, they don't actually know what they're doing. Okay. So that's the biggest issue is the, you know, lack of knowing what to do. So the lack of knowledge, that's number one, lack of knowledge. Okay, so we have this um, first pillar, the lack of knowledge. So at an admin level, you know you need a robotics program. You roll one out, but you actually have no clue what you're doing. So you just buy a bunch of stuff, right? So whatever that is, hardware, lesson plans, whatever, and you just hope and pray that it will magically work itself out and you have a program, okay? That's not what you should do. You should not just go out and aimlessly buy a bunch of like robots and buy a bunch of stuff if you have no idea what you're doing with it, okay? Um, that's just gonna set you and your team, whether you have a group of teachers or instructors, um, that's gonna set you up to fail, right? Because if, if you just buy a bunch of stuff and hope that it works, uh, you don't actually have a plan, okay? So that's going to be pillar number two. You don't have a plan. So I'm going to put no plan, okay? So you just know that you want robotics, okay? So I'll put a, you know that you want robotics, right? Because you wouldn't be watching this video if you could care less about robotics. Um, or you just wanted to see me do another whiteboard presentation, which is totally cool. Um, but most people, when they are planning this out, they don't plan. They just say, we need robotics. And then they just buy a bunch of stuff. And then they hope that whoever's running that program knows what they're doing. And 
it magically works. Okay. And, and if you think about this, this would literally be like hiring a contractor to like put in a new kitchen for you, but they don't draw out what the new kitchen looks like. They just come in with a sledgehammer and just start slamming, you know, your cabinets and they start doing all the demo work, but they don't actually have an idea of what the new kitchen is going to look like. So that's the best analogy that I can give you. Um, you don't have a plan. So, so the plan is typically just very generic. I want robotics. I buy a bunch of robots. I don't know what I'm doing with it, but it should work, right? And that's why your program isn't very good, okay? The other issue is, is you don't have any outcomes, okay? So there's no outcomes. You know you want robotics, right? Because everybody else is doing robotics or they have some flavor of a STEM or STEAM or whatever acronym that people are using these days. Um, you know that you want this program, you have no plan, you have no knowledge about it, and you also have no outcomes, okay? So when, when we work with organizations, what we try to do is figure out why do you even want this program in the first place? Is it because like, you know, XYZ school down the street is offering robotics and you need one so that you can say that you have robotics or is there some goal that you're trying to hit? A lot of times what we try to do with our partners is we try to get them to think longer term, like why does this matter? Why are you teaching this? Why are you going to invest your money or your students' money? Some of, some of the schools we work with are private schools, so they're paying a tuition to go to these schools. Why are you going to take that money and invest in a robotics program with no outcomes that you really care about, no real plan, and no knowledge to do it? Why, why, would, you even, why would you even do that? That doesn't make sense, right? So... What we try to do is we try to think, okay, long term, like let's pretend we have a school of 100 students that are going to be in this robotics program. Okay, so we've got 100 students. 100 students. Maybe the goal is in one year, we have, I don't know, let's just say 80% of these students so will have 80 students trained in coding, electronics, and robotics to prepare them for either a two-year degree or a four-year degree. And this is the target. So if we are successful in this program, 80 students are going to know how to code in an industry standard language. We use C, C++, which is awesome for robotics. And we provide um, the resources so that students can actually practice these skills so that they can use them in other areas of their lives, okay? So robotics isn't just about the robots. Like, yes, there's technical training involved. Yes, you need to know coding, you need to know electronics, you need to know mechanics, you need to know how to integrate all of those together and do some problem solving. You 100% need to know that. But what robotics does is it brings in all of these different disciplines and it creates critical thinkers. And so what we try to do is we try to get the organization to leverage this program that they're going to have, you know, a success rate of 80% or better of the students that participate in this program. They're going to walk away with critical thinking skills that are going to help them in other areas of, you know, their high school or whatever, their college career, or if they're professional, they're going to help them think about problems differently in other areas of their lives. And they have a plan to do that. Okay. So that's the first step. We figure out what it is, what is the goal? What is that press release that we're going to tell the world that your organization is going to be doing now? Um, we have an organization that has a sponsor and one of their press releases that the, the sponsor um, put out was that their goal is to have 500 students trained in coding and robotics to prepare them for um, high tech careers in the next two years. Okay, so to be able to say that their organization is training 500 students on how to code and build robots in the next two years is like phenomenal. Like who wouldn't want their kid to go to that organization? Who wouldn't want to be part of that? Okay, so that's the first thing we do is we look at the outcomes. Another type of outcome that we look at is professional development. So whether it's upskilling or educator training, we have PD programs where we've done this very similar thing. We've done, you know, the students, we did a pilot program with one of our partners where it was like, we took, I think it was like 15, 15 schools and 15 teachers, one teacher from each school, something like that, where they participated in a national training program with us. And they were upskilled with 
not only learning how to code and work with robots, but then being able to take that information and feel comfortable and confident to teach that in the classroom, right? Okay, so if you have a teacher, uh, and then we can kind of jump over to pillar one, where you just dump a bunch of stuff on their desk and say, you're gonna be teaching this now, um, we need a robotics program. What do you think that's going to do for them? They're not going to feel comfortable teaching that. They're not going to know what to do. They're not going to feel confident. You're completely changing the mood of what robotics is because you've put them in a position where they can't be successful. Okay. And so what we do is we take a step back. We provide that outcome. Okay. We want to make sure our staff knows what they're doing and feels comfortable and confident doing it so that when they show up in the classroom with these materials, they're excited and they're enthusiastic about actually teaching robotics. And you have an awesome program, right? Because the students will pick up on how the instructor is feeling. So if the instructor comes in and they're feeling scared or they're feeling worried or they're feeling um, unmotivated or they're angry or they're upset, the students are gonna associate all of those negative emotions with robotics and with technology. And that's gonna hurt your program. Students can pick up on how you feel, your energy as the adult in the room. And so if you have teachers that are excited, they know exactly what to do, they're, they feel comfortable, they don't feel rushed, they have the resources, they have the training, they have the knowledge. They've been empowered to you know, be that guide for these students, the students will be more successful. And I'm sure you can relate that to some of the students or some of the staff that you have in your organization now. The ones that are doing really well probably have a better attitude about the subjects that they're teaching and therefore their students do better. So that is, I guess we jump from pillar three, having outcomes, putting people in a position to be successful, having knowledge, having the right tools, and then Step pillar two is actually having the plan. So what we do with organizations is we actually map out how you're going to run this curriculum, what it looks like. Learn Robotics has standards-driven um, robotics curriculum. It's licensed content. We What we do is we create a roadmap that makes sense for your organization because some organizations, they're on like a quarter system, a trimester, a semester, an annual. We have some organizations that run like an eight week program. So what we do is we sit with you and we map out a plan that makes sense. We're working with you, we're consulting with your organization so that when you roll this out, you have exactly what you need that if you follow everything that we tell you to do to AT, you have no choice but to be successful with your robotics program. So I would encourage you to take a, a look, take five minutes, use this information, use this model that I've mapped out on this whiteboard and try to figure out some of these things that you can do to kind of flip your program so that it goes from crappy to really cool, really creative, really great so that you're providing the best experience for your group. And if you'd like my help, if you'd like to work with me at Learn Robotics to set up a program for your organization in robotics and get people upskilled, get people trained and ready, and you want to produce some more success stories in the robotics industry, then book a call with me. There's going to be a link below this video. If you're watching on YouTube, if you're listening to the podcast, you can check out the show notes. You can go to our uh, website, learnrobotics.org and click on the four schools button in the menu. And that'll take you to the page where you can learn a little bit more about how we work with our partners and how we provide you with exactly what you need to do at your organization to invest the money into a robotics program that's going to get you results, that's going to get you student success stories, and you might as well. If you have to spend money on something, you might as well have the results that go with it. So thanks so much for spending time with me today on the podcast. It's been a great one. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave a five-star review. Check out the links below this video or in the show notes, and I hope you have a chat with you soon. See you next time.